The community of Jesus. Last night, you heard allegations about this religious community on Cape Cod. I think there's the potential there for something like Waco. Tonight, ex-members speak out about the children. My daughter still has nightmares about the community of Jesus, waking up fearful that someone's coming to try to kill her. Charges of children separated from their parents, babies abused by community leaders. Is it possible that some, someone took the word of God and ran with it? Answering charges of child abuse in the name of God. I was beaten in front of a whole community of 150 people across my back. A spiritual retreat or a factory of broken spirits? I ran through the backwoods and over the back fence and I hid behind the docks. Is escape the only way out? A chronicle investigation, community or cult? Next. Tonight, Peter Mahegan, Mary Richardson, and Mike Barnacle. Chronicle, the New England News Magazine. Last night, we introduced you to the community of Jesus, well known to people on Cape Cod. Their band marches in the 4th of July parade. Their choir is nationally recognized. The compound in Orleans is home to 350 born-again Christians. Other members live in the area or come on retreats. In their 23-year history, the group says it has helped hundreds find spiritual fulfillment. I was just mixed up inside. I didn't, uh, I don't think I was a real person. And I didn't even know it until, until I came here. But former members say this bucolic image masks a darker, more perverse side to the community of Jesus. Their allegations include mind control, emotional abuse, physical abuse. My daughter still has nightmares about the community of Jesus, waking up fearful that someone's coming to try to kill her because she's left. I think for my oldest son, um, He still doesn't know what a wonderful person he is. Be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. The community of Jesus has vehemently denied these allegations. Tonight, some new ones. Former members charge that community policy is to take children away from their parents to be raised in other homes. The constant moving of people from one house to another, you never have the chance to form your own world, your own security. It's, it's always keeping you on the go, so you never know where you're staying or what's going on. Nancy Sullivan was a teenager when her mother joined the community. Both Nancy's father and brother had died of brain tumors. Her distraught mother was looking for solace. But within a short time, Nancy says, the community moved her out of her mother's house and prohibited any contact. I mean, it was just, it was like going through another whole death another whole grieving period to be ripped away like that. Essentially what the cult leader wants is always to have allegiance from the young to them, not to their parents, not to siblings. And so in many of these groups, relationships are broken down and rearranged. Children were allowed to attend public school, but former members say were not allowed to have outside friends to play sports on town teams, or even to join the Cub Scouts. Well, many times while I was there, I was separated from my family. Even my brothers and I were separated. We had to go to different houses. Um, I don't know, that you just don't feel like a family. You, you lose your self-worth. Being switched around, not knowing what's going on, having someone always peering over your shoulder, not the same person, waiting for you to do something wrong. It, it breaks you down, it humiliates you. You're no longer a person. According to ex-members, children, even babies, were subjected to harsh discipline. My son Paul was very small. He was just over a year old. And he had been sick and been in the hospital. And he would wake up at night crying. And they would not let me go into him. And they would go in and throw water in his face and say that they were breaking his will. And it was for his good and for my good because I was such a terrible mother. 
Former member Bonnie LaCrosse once turned her own six-year-old daughter in for committing what she thought was a sexual sin, playing doctor with her doll. And they brought up things that, you know, this has happened before. Tell me the truth. You're not telling us the truth. You're being disobedient. Don't look at your mother. Then I chose to leave the room. I mean, I chose to give them my daughter to confront for another three hours. Sean DeLude says when he complained about living with other families, he was shipped off to the community's affiliated boarding school in Canada. When he escaped and confronted his family, he says, they told him, either go back or we'll disown you. I'll never regret leaving. Uh, I left two younger brothers and a younger sister that I, I love, love to death. I hope that they have enough strength and, and maybe someday see that, that what's going on in that place is, is not right. Wasn't that rather a harsh choice? You either go back to school or you're, we no longer have anything to do with you. You're not our son. Uh, I don't feel it was. I mean, yes, it is. No, it isn't. Sean's father tells a different story. He says he sent Sean there to get his grades up. We expected more out of our, our kids, in this case, Sean. And I believe we were doing everything we could possibly to help him out of a grieved concern for how he was doing in school. This is a tough question, but do you ever feel like Sean, your son, has been sacrificed for your love of God? No. Many ex-members tell us that it is routine to remove children from their families. Well, first of all, uh, we don't remove children. Now, uh, from time to time, I might get a note, say, from a 12-year-old that says, for the summer, I'd like to live with my buddies, and mom and dad say it's okay. What percentage would you say of the children live with their biological parents and what with other families? Well, Mary, I would say all of their ch all children live with their biological parents. That's a change in practice then, correct? No, that's not a change in practice. But remember Sean DeLude. His father acknowledges sending him to live with other families. Uh, I don't struggle with that at all. Uh, I think that from the experience that we have had with our children, I have felt very strongly, along with my wife, that this is a very positive effect on our children. To let them live with other families. Yes, I believe it to be. So it is routine for children to live with other families. Yes, it is. Shortly after this interview, Don DeLude sent Chronicle a letter retracting his response. He claimed he did not understand the question. Another former member, Bonnie LaCrosse, says the community asked her to leave the room while her six-year-old daughter was interrogated for hours. Um, True? Did that happen? <laughs> well, again, um, I've never had one of my children interrogated. I've never interrogated a child. Um, I just go back to the fact that the whole posture, the whole attitude here is, is to uh, give that sort of family concern, family involvement. So even the use of the word interrogation is, is foreign. Is it possible that some w someone took the word of God and ran with it? That someone... Uh, if that had happened here, Mary, it would have been quickly stopped. Are you free of them? Are you free of the community of Jesus? I'm free enough to stand and speak against it, but there's a lot that still affects me. There is something that affects me positively, and that is that I know I can live through hell and survive. Coming up next... I was forced, forced to take medicine, tranquilizers. A case of mind and body control 